All right, we're back with the heap. I know we haven't seen this guy in a little while. It's been doing pretty good, but uh, it needs a little work, especially in the front end. It's time to look into the Dana 30 once again. So we are going to be doing uh, wheel bearings, axle tube seals, aftermarket outer axle tube seals, and a diff cover. These wheel bearings, this driver's side is shot, so it's time to do some work. So let's take a look. I want to uh, protect my diff as best as I can. I still have the stock cover, and it's been doing okay so far, but I don't really want to chance it. I've wanted to put a uh, an aftermarket cover on for quite a while, because these are kind of thick, but there's a dent right there, and the bottoms get chewed up real bad with all the other uh, rocks and stuff I go through. So I already have over the knuckle steering, so that diff cover is the next thing to eat it. So let's get ourselves something a little beefier. Along with that, I figure since I'm in here, we're going to do some axle tube seals only because of the price. They used to go for a whole lot. You know, now they go for the, the real ones go for 70 bucks. And then uh, there was an off brand that you could get for 50 bucks. But I figured, let's see what's out there on the internet. And of course, eBay delivered. So, this right here on eBay was $33 for 10 factory axle tube seals. They go for $53 on Quadratech. So I don't know how you can get these $20 cheaper on eBay and they look like the factory, the, the 10 factory seals, but yeah, they look legit. I don't, I don't know for sure. I mean, if this is a knockoff, that's kind of messed up that you're going to put it in the actual, you know, manufacturer box, <laughs> but they look legit and they're 20 bucks cheaper. So for those of you that don't know, this is an outer axle tube seal. It's got a grease fitting. You slide this side into the axle tube and this side points out towards the shaft and then the grease in there seals it up. And all this does is keep dirt and sand and dust out of your tubes. This is not a critical component. It doesn't really matter if there's dirt in there. But, you know, for people that like to keep things clean, I guess it could be useful. So yeah, we're gonna slide them in there while we have the, uh, the shafts apart while we're rebuilding everything. Now, onto the diff cover. We have ourselves a Riddler, ooh. All right, sliced open the box. What do we got? Packing peanuts, yeah. Eh. Wow, holy. She's looking steep. Nice. Um to papa. Oh yeah. Damn. It doesn't quite look like that in the picture, but holy crap, that mother is stiff. <laughs> Damn, that's got some nice weight to it. Alright. I dig it. That looks sweet. So if I'm not mistaken, I think it has a slightly raised fill hole, and it's also in an inclined angle up, so it's easier to get your bottles and tubes and stuff in there, because it's a real pain in the ass to fill these things up if you don't have that little squirt bottle. So this is the Riddler Dana 30 diff cover. I also like the way that it's casted, so that the um, when the, the bolts actually sit kind of recessed in there, so they kind of get protected. The bottom is a little open, but still, I mean, that's a lot better than nothing. That, that keeps most of the crap off of them. And this kit also comes with a big old sticker. Jesus. New hardware. And a cute little tube of a gasket maker. Now I'm going to get myself a real gasket because RTV is obnoxious to clean off and take off. Seriously, for two bucks... It's two bucks. Just get yourself a, a freaking a gasket, a differential gasket. They come right off. If you, if you feel like spending the big bucks, you can get like a lube locker or something like that that's reusable. I thought about it, but I couldn't find a good price, so meh. All right. I think that'll uh, do it for the upgrades. So I guess it's time to start tearing into the axle. All right, step one, jack it up and tear it down. Let's get them tires off. Okay, up on jack stands, whoopie-doo. It's hot as fuck out. What do you think? Yeah, she's good. 
Yeah, that bearing is fucking shot. I wonder why my brake pedal kept going down and then getting tight and then going down any farther. It's because the wheel was crooked and then pushing on the caliper actually straightened it out again. <laughs> yeah, it's a telltale deal on your uh, wheel bearing shot. I don't know if it was noisy or not. The old Jeep's loud. Anyway, let's pull the tires off. Okay, tires are off. Next is going to be the calipers and then the uh, axle shaft nut. Hey, what do you think? Metallic particles everywhere. Wheel bearing bounces all around. That thing is done. Holy crap. On the pads, you can actually see the ridge. <laughs> nice. Zip this thing off. It's gonna be big as hell. Okay, I don't know what nut size it is. It's not, it's it's bigger than a 33, but I think it's smaller than a 36. It was a little loose in the 36, but it worked. Uh, oh, you fucking cunt. Okay. So we have ourselves a washer, big nut, this goofy thing, cotter pin, take all that out. And then, last but not least, we've got three 12 point bolts that we gotta take off. They're fun. So break them free, and then uh, we can enjoy trying to get that hub out. All right, if you've done this job before, anytime in the last, I don't know, four or five years, this thing should come off rather easy. Split point is right here, right on the boundary of this brake shield. So what you want to do is try and hit on these nubs. That might help break it free a little bit. You come back here, you loosen the bolts a little bit, not all the way, just a little bit. So you put your socket on there, and then you hit that. I can fucking hit the thing straight. I don't know if you saw that, but it actually inched forward. So if we take all these bolts out, this one should come out. If yours doesn't, <laughs> prepare for a lot more beating, chisels, heat, and lots of cursing. Okay, if you did it right, your hub will come off and your axle shaft will probably come with it. No big deal. Support it on the way out if you feel like caring about your seal, but we're gonna change that anyway. You notice there's lots of fluid leaking. That's because when the hub was sitting down, it messed up the seal, blah, 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 bad things. Okay, so. You get the deal, she's basically free. So, fuck this hub. Okay, one down, one to go. Okay, hub two, and axle shaft free. Plenty of grease on that one too, so you know that seal went bad. Ugh, one piece conversion, gotta love it. Okay. So now all that shit's done, I guess we can take the diff cover off, pull out the carrier. Next up is the wonderful diff cover. For stock, it's half inch bolts. Well, impact makes this a breeze. Make sure to have a uh, catch pan ready. Pro tip, leave a bolt at the top. That way when this finally breaks free, it doesn't fall. Oh, fluid drain. Remember when I mentioned gaskets were easier? This is why. You just sit here, peel it all off. Look at that. Five seconds of work, you're done. Don't dick around with our TV. It's not worth it. Okay, so this next step is what separates the boys from the men. Yes, the carrier. Now I got myself a neat knee locker in here, so it's gonna look a little different from a stock carrier. Uh, biggest annoyance here, since we got a wire coming out of the top, I gotta unassemble the uh, connector so I can slide the wire back through to take it out. It's the only pain in the ass. And then we get to take the, uh, the bearing cap bolts off. Now I'm told that there's some kind of ancient hieroglyphics on here that tell you which side these caps go on and which side is up. But uh, I never learned how to read Chinese. Oh, son of a bitch, look at that. It's actually an American. See that little A on the side over here? Matches the A on that cap. Same rotation too. If you come over here, same deal. Got an A down and I don't know if you can see that. It's right below the two. There. Huh. Son of a gun. Learn something new every day. Anyway, the important part behind that is these should only go on one way. They are uh, mechanically separated in such a way that they only truly fit on the way that they came off. So make sure to remember their orientation when you take them out. They're gonna be on there tough. I think it's about 80 foot pound of torque to hold them on there so might need your big boy gun or some muscles. God, fuck that connector. This thing's taking longer than pulling apart the fucking axle. First off, these things are not designed to come apart easily at all if they're at all dirty. 
I'm trying to get these pins to come free. You need to have like the world's thinnest screwdriver sticking it all the fucking way in there to free up the pin to pull that fucking thing out. Piece of junk. All right, now we can fucking jam that back to the axle and actually start working on the damn thing. Okay, so I finally got that stupid little rubber thing out. Bearing caps are off, those are 5 eighths. Now, the next part is going to differ depending on how tight your bearings are. If they're loose, your carrier should fall right out. If they're tight, you're gonna have to get yourself uh, some kind of pry bar and get them out. Now, when you take these out, make sure those bearing races stay with the bearings. You can't have them switch sides because they've worn into each other and it's it's a one-time thing. It's, it's the best, so. When you take them out, make sure those little races right there, that big thing on the left, make sure it stays together with it. At least stay on the same side so you know which one's which. Take this out and we're good. There we go, so. There we are. Now, I did have one shim on this side, so when I built it, I guess I, I needed slightly more on this. So, we can put that back in if we can get it to fit. They make a, a housing splitter. It's a thing that goes in here and here. It's a big clamp and you can actually expand the housing and get the gear in there. And then when you let go, it, it contracts so that there's the proper preload on these bearings. So that's very useful because those stupid little thin shims, you, <laughs> you can't really push them in there otherwise. All right, so now we get to push out the bearing, or uh, we get to push out the seals. Did you say seal? So this one over here gets knocked in. And since I did the two-piece conversion, we're going to replace this one over here. Basically get the longest pipe you can find and just knock the thing in. So we'll do that. All right, so we got our smacky pipe right here. We give it a whack, we give it a smack, and we give it a booyah. Can I hear a booyah? Come on, one for me. We might be pushing inside the seal. Let's see what's going on. Might have to smack it on the other side too. Yeah, it went right through the middle. Son of a gun. All right, try that again. <laughs> so apparently that pipe was literally perfect size to fit in that seal, and I couldn't hit it on an angle. It just kept going in. So get yourself a bigger pipe. Smack it a couple times, it'll come right out. Okay. So that's one motherfucker down. Another one to go. Due to some uh, stupid seals or something, uh, something with this CAD axle housing, that little thing in the center, there must have been a bearing or something in the way that's just a little too small for that stupid fucking thing to fit through. So I'd use something thinner to actually slide through. Okay, that one actually came out in one tiny little hit, but I expected it to. It's not in there well. So this axle is completely taken apart now. Yay! Except, well, you know, except for the pinion, but we're not doing shit with the pinion anyway. We can pull the drive shaft and see if we get our pinion preload at least kind of close. Got to pull the drive shaft anyway because I got a new one. <laughs> so now we get to clean out the axle tubes because they are filthy. Bunch of junk, guy. Eh? So yeah, I don't know how the heck I'm gonna do this. Some kind of brush or something. I don't know. Let's see if we can find something to clean them out when we put our new axle tube seals in. And now your cute moment of the day. Today's show hosted to you by Backyard Rabbit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I don't know what the hell this thing is, but I find it laying around. I think it'll do nicely. Give it a little slide on in there. Chimney sweeping. Choo choo. Don't get any funny ideas, mister. Ugh, it'd be great to hook this up to a drill or something. Smarter, not harder. So when that doesn't work, get yourself a big old socket. This one is our 36. Something that fits in there nice and snug. And you can push all that shit through. It's like a plunger. Yum. All right. Not bad. Pretty clean. It ain't exactly mirror, but most of the shit's out anyway. So with a combination of the big old socket and this thing, 
I did okay. I need to use this to push some of the uh, shit through the, uh, the middle of that CAD thing. I might pull the door off that and clean out the rest, but looking good. Okay, so we gotta clean the schmoo out of there. We can put our axle seals in. So we got this one over here for the driver's side. J8121781. This has got the funny little guide rip, the guide lip on there, so it makes the axle shaft go in and not mess up the seal. This one, 11800, is for the passenger side if you're going to convert to a full one piece axle shaft. The uh, other kit I had, it came with a thicker one, but it was also had a slightly bigger diameter, and I could not get the damn thing in the hole straight. So this one is thinner. I think if I grind a little bit off, it should fit in there pretty well. So I'm going to clean this out. And we're going to start putting some seals in. Okay, so first up is going to be this guy. It's going to face this way in the tube. And there's a little ridge for it to sit in. I blew this all out with compressed air and brake clean, so she's looking pretty good now. Cool. So let's see how hard it is to put this in. Alright, so this one's going to be a bit obnoxious. So I got a pipe cap long ass pipe out the other side see if I can whack it in there's not enough room to get the uh, amount of force needed to push that in so we're gonna have to go from over here let's hope it stays together yeah this is two person work honestly I had my dad smack the uh, pipe as hard as he could and I uh, held the cap in place and got things so it hit at the right spot it's not completely completely flush on this side but I can't get it to go any farther but it, Hit that thing like eight or nine times. It's in there good enough for me. <sighs> Onto this side. I hate this side. So this is the side that always sucks, trying to get this stupid seal to stay in there. Since I got real calipers, I'm gonna measure the tube uh, inner diameter, since it's really hard to find on the internet and there's two different versions. So let's see what I got. Okay, so our inner bore diameter is 1.9 inches, I guess, or and eight, 870 thou, if that means anything to you. If you're a metric nerd, oh, there you go. 63, 64 is the closest to that, so a little, little under two inches, or 50.47 millimeters, which I've been a little more familiar with now since I'm doing all that 3D printing stuff. Interesting. So, that is what the inner thing is, and our seal, Probably a little thicker than that. Seal is two inches and then like 110, 100 thou. And that's probably the coating on there. So yeah, it's, uh, that's what, 300 thou of uh, <laughs> surface you gotta fucking distort? That's a bit much. Great, this is gonna be fun. Took myself a little Dremel, grinded some of the, uh, the coating off. So let's see if that fits a little better. That's enough to do it. Bit of a pain in the ass, but once you can finally start walking in it, it's not too bad. I think it's slightly warped, and I had that same issue last time too. But I don't know, at least now that I know what the diameter is, I might be able to find a better seal for next time. I ordered a second one just in case because I knew I'd probably have issues. If I didn't order it, I'd need it, and if I did order it, I wouldn't need it. So hey, better to have it and uh, not need it than need it and not have it. That was way too messy to uh, hold the camera and show you, but it's back in there. Make sure your uh, caps are facing the proper orientation on the right side. Everything's all cleaned up. Uh, these bolts get torqued down to 80 foot-pounds, if I believe, and I need a little RTV on this little goober and slide that back up through the hole. Cool. All right, it's axle tube seal time. So we got it decently cleaned up. I blew it out and tried to clean it up as best I could. So, pretty simple install. Put a little black RTV around the uh, outside and uh, jam it in. That's, that's pretty much it. That's, that's all you do. You just, you just stick it in there and you're good. Um, as for clearance, I do believe we're going to have to take this stupid thing off the uh, shaft. So, that's going to be fun to get around that goofy little lip. So, once we beat the crap out of that, mangle it and probably just cut it off. Slide it and be done. Sweet! So, while we're here, it wouldn't hurt to take out that screw and uh, put some grease in our lower ball joint since we can't get to it with the shaft in place. So that's an idea. Okay, so she's got plenty of RTV on there. We're gonna use a pipe cap to help knock it in all the way. 
A little hammer action and she should be good. Oh yeah, she's definitely in there tight. <laughs> I had to finish it off with this thing and smack around all the edges until the RTV started squirting out the side. So she's in there good now. And then if you notice, I got the grease fitting pointed towards the back so I can actually access it. So, cool. Now I can slide this, uh, the shaft in. Sweet. I am Excalibur! Yeah. Hop hop. Ho ho. Oh yes. Be gentle, baby. Mmm. Just the tip, mind ya. And only for a minute. After that, we'll grease this. There you go, side two complete. So if you're curious, that's about how far it sticks out. And you just grease it up until it starts coming out the little piss hole up there. Okay. Now, on to the good shit. Nothing but the best for this mud slut. We got Timkin Burns, baby. Check it. Korea. The packaging is absolutely fantastic. It looks beautiful. So, we're going to toss them in there. Put our stupid fucking brake uh, rock shields back in. And then we're going to do rotors and brakes. Cool. I'm impressed I got this done in a day. Yeah, I say that now. Any ANCs, this is the time to use it. Them bolts right there for the, uh, the hubs. You want them to be able to come out later because that is a very important part. <laughs> Especially when you pop shafts and shit like that. So make sure, get yourself a little dab on there. Yeah. Hey, okay, cool. So now we got all three of the bolts in there. Everything's all tightened up. Liberal amount of anti-seize on all the mating surfaces, so we might have a chance of getting it off later. So now we can put the uh, rotor and caliber back on. Uh, I'm waiting for the nuts to come back in the mail, so they should be here tomorrow. But it's fine, we can basically finish everything. And then put that on. Yeah, so this is extremely important, these nuts, because it helps preload the hub. And without the preload, the bearings go to shit pretty quick. So we'll put the other hub on. And then we can finish the brakes. And then maybe get to that diff cover. Okay. Slide your rotor on. Put your brake pads on. Make sure you got these little flicky things in here. What they do is they push down and provide pressure to help the pads float on there. And then uh, just slide your caliper on and tighten up the bolts in the back. All right, cool. So besides those uh, nuts, that's it. So here we got our spindle nut kit. This comes with the new nut washer, lock collar, and our cotter pin. So you put the washer on first. Then you put your big ass nut on. Now, the secret to making your hubs last is torquing this. This nut gets 175 foot-pounds of torque. That puts the proper preload on it to keep the bearings spinning properly and not getting all loosey-goosey and falling apart or too tight and wearing themselves out prematurely. After that, you put your dupe, stupid little fucking locky thing in there and then you put the cotter pin through. Easy beans. So if both your tires are off, your whole uh, like assembly over here is gonna start trying to spin. So you can just put a big old flathead in here in one of those little shims. It's better to have it against this, because this is bolted down to the knuckle. The caliper just kind of floats there. You don't want to put too much pressure on that. So there, 175. And just like that, we're done. So if this doesn't fit, if your hole doesn't line up, just rotate it one click, and then it usually will. It's got a lot of play in there so that you can get it just right. All right, cool. Put the tires on, you're done. All right, so now it's time for the prize possession. So... I kind of got an orange color going, at least that's what my valve cover is, and I like the color a lot. So I want to see if I can paint just the R on the outline, orange. So I got this uh, copper engine enamel, I still got a little left over. So I've been watching online to see how to do this. Basically you just spray some of it out and store it in a little bottle. And then I'm going to try and dab it on with a paper towel and see if that works. Mm, see how smart the internet is. Looks pretty cool. So we make a little finger dinger like this. You take a paper towel, you roll it up real tight, and then you make a little squishy end. And I guess you just dab it, dab off the excess, and then it's all about the pressure that you use. The harder you push down, the more around the edges it's gonna get. But if you go too far, you're gonna paint shit you don't want. So let's see how well this works. Hmm. 
Not bad. Mm. Tell me that isn't some tight shit right there. Look at that. That came out beautifully. Holy cow. Nice job, internet. Cool. Yeah. So, I found I had to load this up quite often, so I just hold this in one hand, and then slowly dip that in the other until it takes a little bit. And then you just go to town and you do a little bit. You kind of have like a line to work with, so you just be careful and you'll know when it, it dries up and you got to hit it some more. I noticed towards the end there was some darker, like orange specks getting in there, so I just blot them a little more to kind of blend it in. But yeah, it works pretty well. A little saran wrap and a straw to try and keep it in there. I had to do it in little squirts because if, if you did it too much, then it started coming out the, uh, the other side. But yeah, that's easy. Cool. I guess we'll let her dry then. That looks fucking gorgeous. Kinda wanna like put some clear coat on it now. Really finish her off. Look at that, huh? She's looking mighty nice, eh? <laughs> Righteous. I dig it. Okay. Take this beefy mamma jamma. And install it. So here we have ourselves a diff cover gasket. And the bolts that came with the kit. So they got those goofy little lock washers. That's gonna be a little pain in the ass. It's just one more obnoxious step when you're taking the thing on and off. But yeah, usually you can get these a lot smaller, <laughs> but this was on sale for cheap, so hey, whatever. I guess I'll pay for the extra cardboard. This is pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> We're gonna make sure the surfaces are clean and then bolt up the new one. The beef is real, by the way. Holy. Yeah, buddy. That's some good shit right there. Yeah, I think that'll stand up to some uh, abuse quite well. Get yourself a little brake clean. Clean up both surfaces nice and well. Nice and shiny. No crap on there. All good to go per day. Nice. Okay, so our gasket can only fit on one way. It's pretty easy. Line up all the holes in your set. So we're going to put the gasket on the cover, and we're going to put the cover on there, put a bolt in there, make sure she looks good. Okay, so once we got all our bolts in there, then we can uh, start tightening. It's best to do an a crisscross pattern, so you start here, and then you go there, and then you know you work your way, you figure it out. Okay, so, lovely. Don't have to torque them down super tight, just enough to be on there. Alright, she's looking pretty. Plenty of clearance too for those that are curious, that's how far it sticks out. Nice. She's looking beautiful. That should really withstand some abuse. The only thing that sucks is like this bolt down here, it's going to take a lot of the beating. So, it's, you know, better than the stock, but not by much because it's really just this bottom, bottom little edge right here, so it really gets the, eats the rocks. Besides that, I'm really impressed. This is a nice freaking cover. So next is going to be seeing how hard it is to fill this. I like that it's at an upper angle so you might actually have a chance of getting something in there. Although with my uh, over the knuckle it's sort of in line. We'll see what we can do. Worth the upgrade just for this. It actually fits. Holy crap. Nice. Okay that should make filling this a whole lot easier and all the convoluted tube bullshit I had to do before because pumps don't work with that. It's way too thick. Nice. All right. So what do you put in it? 80W90 gear oil. 140 stuff. Yeah, you can do that for towing package stuff if you want. I don't know if thicker is really better or not. Eh, might just make more heat. So I have a little over two quarts here. So we're going to see how much this thing drinks. Since it's uh, a little bigger all around, it should hold more fluid. So you fill up to the line, and once it starts pissing out, you're good. That's the sign right there that she's full. So now the fun part of uh, hopefully you didn't dump too much in there. <laughs> so we're going to pull out the spout, put in her plug, call it a day. Final step is just to tighten her up. So that is a 3 eighths hex head. Lovely. That is something I do not have on me right now. Looks like it's time to add some more tools to the Jeep. Nice. So in case you're curious, that Dana 30 took uh, about a quart of uh, fluid. That's not too bad. 
All right, to finish this drivetrain off, we got ourselves a big box. You guess what it is? Yeah, buddy. Holy shit, look at that thing, huh? Looks like a goddamn nuclear missile. <laughs> That's beautiful. Yeah, bolts, stickers. So I got this from uh, eBay. Seller was a nuclear off-road, which is a authorized Adams drive shaft dealer. They have a great price and free shipping. I don't know how, but they got a great, beautiful price. Look at this monster, man. Jesus. <laughs> I really like the packaging. This is beautiful. This is how you package a product. That's, that's well done. That's super excellent. It's an important step that's overlooked sometimes, but it's, it's a very important one. Bit of a bummer, though. It looks like uh, they only gave me a, a short length um, extension spline. Hmm. Oh well, not quite as long as the front. It'll do, as long as it fits. So this one has a sticker, and it has our little bolts, and some Loctite too. Cool. Alright. Okay, so if you notice the included bolts were a little small, they are 12.516. You might think that's a bad thing, but I think that they are stronger than grade 8 if I remember correctly. Uh, but the biggest benefit is you can fit one of these motherfuckers on here and make this whole job so much faster. This is the most tedious job ever. Sitting there with a stupid wrench going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And you can't fit a gear wrench, you can't fit a socket, nothing in there. Oh god, what a bitch. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy that they include that. It makes this job so much faster. I dig it. Need more leverage with tiny wrench? Double it. Oh, yeah. Arg. Probably help if I went in the loosing direction, eh? Bro. Hey. Ooh. Yes. Even left-handed. Sweet. All right, so I'm wondering if that's going to be an issue. Because that's what my rear shaft was doing. The original one, the U-joint cap started spinning because I guess they, they have room to bounce. That's really annoying. The only real fix for that would be uh, a new yoke gross. Anyway, if you want to make this job a whole lot faster, impact, swivel socket, make sure you get yourself a six point, a proper six point, not a, uh, a 12 point, because these bolts are soft and you don't want to mess the heads up. They round really easily. So if you can't wiggle this out by hand, you can use yourself a wrench. It has a little pry bar. Just stick it in there and just pop, pop this forward. And then we can take this off. Two-handed work. I don't want to die. Here's a nice little comparison for you. Beautiful. A little thicker, too. Alright, and just like that, we're all together. Oof. Ain't she a beaut, though? Nice. And then we got our front shaft back in. That joint, the slip joint was a little seized. Had to beat it a little bit. Grease it up. <sighs> All right, I think we're good. Might be ready for a test drive finally. Took you long enough. This thing handles like a wet dream now. Holy crap, it is beautiful. The springs, they feel great. It's nice having wheel bearings <laughs> that are straight. It's nice having drive shafts that don't vibrate. Oh my goodness. Dude, this thing's a monster. Mm. Oh yeah, she's ready. Yeah. This is awesome. I like this. There's only one more thing I need to do to the steering and then I think this thing is golden. And I actually look for AI. What a beaut. <laughs> nice. Well, there you go. That's how you can show a little love to your Dana 30 front axle.